Morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's Professor Williams again, and this morning I want to show you how to solve for a binomial distribution using Excel. And so we're going to use Wanda, who wants some dog biscuits as opposed to just chewing on that soda bottle I've given her. Just to remind you before we get started that a binomial distribution has to meet four requirements. First, there have to be only two outcomes that we can classify as either success or failure. That doesn't mean that there are only two possible results. It means that we can classify us as having either succeeded or failed. We also know that the probability of an outcome has to remain fixed. The trials need to be independent and they have to be identical. So we can't go changing the rules, changing the trial, or changing the probability as we move through these binomials. So I'm going to go grab some Excel and I'll be right back. All right, so here we are. And what I've said is that the probability that Wanda gets a treat when I go to into the kitchen is 30%. So if I go into the kitchen eight times today, What's the probability that she's going to get four treats? Well, this meets all of our criteria for a binomial because the probability of 30% never changes. I know how many trials I have, which is eight, and she either gets a treat or she doesn't, so two outcomes. And I also know that she doesn't get more likely to get a treat one time than the other, which means that they are independent and the probability remains fixed. So in order to solve for this, what I know I'm actually solving for is I'm solving for, grab my pen here, I'm actually solving for the probability that x which is her getting a treat, is equal to 4, given that the probability of success is 0 0.30. I know that n, which is my number of trials, is equal to 8. And I know that I'm solving for just an exact number. So, I'm going to come into a cell in Excel. I'm going to begin to type equals B I N N O M. And I don't even have to get to the M before I see binomial distribution appear. And so I'm going to click on this. And this gives me the quick and just kind of fill in the blank. But what I want to do is I want to go up here. And I want you to click on this insert function. If you double click there, it's going to bring up this great dialog box where we can go ahead and put in our arguments. So we're going to start with the number. Number is the number of successes in trials. Well, we want to know what's the probability that she gets four. Then we want to know the number of independent trials. That would be my eight trips to the kitchen. Probability is the probability of success. We said that was 30%. And now this cumulative logical function. Remember that when Excel solves for a binomial distribution, you have to tell it whether or not you want it to be cumulative. The rule of thumb is pretty simple. When you are solving for a single value, i.e. x equals 4, x equals 10, don't know where that came from, x equals 20, you are always going to type the word false in that box. Now what it's done is it's already given you the answer. So you don't even have to hit enter if you don't want to. But I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And what it tells me 
is that the probability that Wanda will get exactly four treats on my eight trips to the kitchen when there's a 30% likelihood that she does get a treat is going to be 0.136137 or roughly 13.61% probability that out of the eight trips she'll get exactly four treats given that the likelihood of her getting one is 30%.